So you've heard about CMake and you're wondering how it works. Let me show you in three different levels, starting with the basics. At a surface level, CMake is a build tool that allows you to take your source code and one build script and then build the software for multiple systems. So Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even mobile devices. And it does this by reading in its own build scripts and then generating the build scripts for your chosen compiler toolchain, whether that's Visual Studio, Xcode, CLion, or even good old GNU Make. And then once that build script is generated, then your toolchain's build system takes over and does the actual build. Why do it that way? Well, as I said, so that you can take the source code and the build script and generate it for all platforms. All right. That's the basic stuff. But how does it actually do this? Uh, to understand that, we need to dig a little bit deeper and start looking at how CMake works internally. Still at a high level, we don't need to get bogged down by the itty-gritty, nitty little details, but we do need to look inside. So CMake runs things in stages. There are two stages, well, three if you include the build stage. The first stage is the configuration stage. So here is where it will read your actual build scripts. It will pass them and execute them and output a cache of variables. And that gets passed on to the second stage, which is the generation stage. And here's where a generator that's specific to whatever build system or toolchain you're using. So for, if you're using Visual Studio, it'll use a Visual Studio generator. And that takes the output from the configuration stage and uses that to generate the build script that will perform the actual build. And that gets on to the third stage, which is where the, your chosen build system or toolchain takes over and does the actual compilation and, and linking and builds the final uh, working program. But what does it look like in practice? So I'm going to demonstrate that by building one of my own projects. So first step is we make the build directory. And we do that because you want to keep the builds files separate from the source files. Now I'm going to start CMake, and that's a simple CMake dot dot because the, the source files are in the parent directory. And it has begun. It's picked automatically picked Visual Studio, which is exactly what I want. It's got a bit of a pre-make, sorry, pre-configure step where it's checking over the compiler and various other things. And now it's in the configuration stage. And for this project, that'll take a little bit of time because it has to download some packages and build them from the internet. OK, configuring, configuring. And it should be almost done. There you go, configuring done. And the generation stage was finished in the blink of an eye. And that is where CMake's involvement ends and the native build system takes over, in this case, Visual Studio. So I'm going to start that now, and I'm going to use CMake, because CMake is smart enough to know how to start the build system of choice. So build here, and let's do a parallel build to speed things up. There you go. Visual Studio's build system is running now, building one of the libraries. And now another one. This will also take a little bit of time. It's being built for the first time. And it is done. So let's have a look at what it's done. You'll see there's a whole bunch of different files that have been generated. We've built the debug version, and we can start the compiled program. Okay, and there it is. Here is the built program built on Windows, but we can also build it on Linux and on other platforms. At this stage, I bet you're wondering how to learn CMake, in which case I wrote the CMake tutorial just for people like you. So head over to cmaketutorial.com, check it out. That's cmaketutorial.com. Or maybe you're wondering, what's this toolchain thing he keeps on mentioning? In that case, check out the next video over here.